What's going on, Fader Culture? I'm Major Barone. We got my man George here on the chair. Today, we're gonna be breaking down the steps on how to do a comb over with the mid fade. Be sure to stick around to the end because I'm not only gonna give y'all tips on how to do the fade, but also some sheer work and styling tips. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and let's jump right into it. All right, guys, before we get started, do us a favor and hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget to check out our apparel. The link is in the description down below, fadedculture.co. Appreciate all the support and y'all helping us get to the 100K subscribers. Now let's jump into this tutorial. I always start by trimming the top first and then proceed with the fade. Here I'm just gonna wet it and make sure to comb it in its natural position that you're going along with that cow lick in the back. And this shear technique I did learn from Sam Villa, so shout out to Sam Villa. We're gonna do what's called the muscle memory technique. You see the gap right here in my fingers. I'm gonna keep that same gap across the whole head. Just take into consideration that the fringe is usually a little bit longer and we will close that gap as we go to the back. Just working in small sections. Again, using that same muscle memory gap. And don't get me wrong, you can always use some of the uh, hair that was previously cut as a guideline as well. The gap in my fingers that I call the muscle memory is basically just another guideline, another tip to keep the hair length consistent throughout the top. And like I mentioned earlier, that gap in between my fingers is closing as I'm working my way towards the back. And I always cross check my work, so now I'm going to come in these uh, vertical sections. Now to help that top length blend in with the side, I'm going to pull out a section and it's just similar to clipper over comb. Make sure you do pull your fingers straight out and you cut almost vertically with the head. Make sure you part the bangs out of the way, part that fringe out of the way so we can create a lot of volume when it comes to styling and just continue that same process. That's pretty much it for our shear work. Now to begin the fade, I'm gonna start with the clipper, no guard, and the lever fully closed. Starting in that temple peak area, I'm gonna create my first guideline and dropping it just slightly as we approach the back of the ear. And yes, all my clippers are zero gapped and I highly suggest you try zero gapping them if you haven't already. Make sure you step back and you do end up at that same temple peak area on the other side. Now for our second guideline, we're going to open the lever completely, still using no guard. And we're going to take that up about an inch or so. Make sure you are running parallel to the guideline underneath and keep a small brush on your opposite hand to then clean your canvas after every couple strokes. Now for my third guideline, I'm going to use a number one lever still fully open and we're going to continue that process, taking it up about an inch or so, running parallel to the one underneath and of, of course, again, brushing after every couple strokes, guys. You want to make sure your canvas is as clean as possible at all times just to ensure that you get the most out of your guidelines and you make sure that you're basically just setting them in there right. Now for the next step, I'm using number two, lever still fully open, and we're gonna continue that process. But with this number two guard, I do exaggerate that flick out motion, just to make sure I'm not digging into the head, and just keeping it soft and easy with these guidelines. If you haven't noticed, we always leave the lever fully open when we're setting up the canvas, and we don't close it until we start working our way back down.
we're going to continue the process with the number three guard lever still fully open and because we did do that shear work initially to help blend in the top to the side this this guard is basically going to blend in right to the top but of course i do refine it with clipper over comb or even thinning shears over comb As you can see, it's very little hair that's sticking out, but the details do matter, especially with comb overs, guys. The last thing you want is having this all this frizz sticking out from the side. And I usually do my clipper over comb work with the lever open. It acts as a safety net. If you're really new to clipper over comb, I suggest you put that number one guard on there and try it that way. By now, you should have the first guideline that we created with the zero, second that we created with the half, and the third that we created with the one guard fully open the rest blended in now we're just gonna work our way down starting with that top guy line and we're gonna use our one and a half guard and we're gonna close that lever just slightly putting it in a three-fourths position it's basically somewhere in between halfway open and fully open I do use mainly the corners of the clipper when I'm working my way down what this does it basically just helps me take away the initial guideline that I'm trying to remove without creating another hard guideline on top of it obviously sometimes it does happen and that's where the touch-up work comes into play at the end but for the most part this is my rule of thumb now to remove the second guideline coming down i'm going to use my half guard and we're going to leave the lever in that same three-fourths position again using mainly the corners of the clipper this step does create a subtle line right above it but do not take this step any higher as we will come back right now with the one guard and remove that now we're going to attack that subtle line that that half guard created with my one guard leaving the lever in that same three-fourths position and just continue the process guys Now for the final line we're going to use a three step process starting with the lever close and then we're going to open it halfway and finally fully open. We're going to work in sections to take our time with this last line because this last line as we all know is very tedious. We're going to take each of those notches up just slightly. Here I'm starting with the lever closed. Second I'm going to put it halfway and continue using mainly the corners of the clipper. As you can see it's coming together but finally we're going to open the lever completely open and continue that process. We're pretty much done with the fade now guys. Now to continue that three step process along the rest of the head. The back, I usually do break it down into two smaller sections just because the back, I mean, it, we all know it's, it's the worst, but take your time with it, trust the process, and continue. Hope y'all learned something new this far, guys. If y'all know anybody that's in barber school or anybody that just wants to take up on the barber journey, please do share this video with them guys as it does help our channel grow as well.
and finally to remove it off the right side of the head. And once you're done with all these steps guys, I suggest you step back and look at the haircut as a whole and look at any dark spots and pick at them with this touch up work. I usually do it with a half guard starting with the lever open and just work my way around those dark spots or if they have any lumps or scars, those are usually some things that I attack at the end and really try to hone in on those details. Now I use my trimmer in this direction just to get a lot closer to the scalp but before I do this always test your trimmers inside your forearm and make sure they are not scratching and then you turn your trimmer around and remove the faint line that that leaves and what this is going to do it's just going to get a lot closer to the scalp it's going to leave a faint line once we remove all that hair from underneath and this is going to basically serve as a guideline so we know how high up to take the electric shaver. I always remove the beard about mid ear. This is that faint line that I was speaking of. Now we know how high to take up the electric shaver. I always run the back of my hands on the uh, neck area just so I know the direction that the uh, follicle is growing in. So I make sure to shave against it just to ensure a smoother shave. And as we approach that faint line, I turn my shaver around and use it as if it was a clipper using mainly the corners just to ensure that we don't create a line above that. Repeat that all around the head and we are done with the fade guys. Now I'm just taking his beard down with the one and a half. Make sure you are trimming against the grain. And always ask your client to pull his lip down when you are trimming the mustache. Now to blend the beard into the fade, I'm going to close the lever completely and use that same three step process. But now basically just use it in reverse. I'm going to start with the lever fully open, close it halfway and then close it all the way. And this is just going to blend the beard into the fade. and finishing it off with the trimmer. As for the neckline, I always locate their Adam's apple and just go about a finger up. Starting in the middle as usual and work my way to each side. Now I'm going to use spritz to help freeze that hair at the top so we can edge up right underneath the hairline. The link is in the description down below guys to all the products we use including this one. And what I do is I blow dry it a little bit just to kind of speed up the process of it freezing and holding in place. And just like the neckline I start in the middle and work my way to the sides. Applying a little bit of shave gel so we don't irritate the skin and then I start by shaving with the grain and then follow that by shaving against the grain. Always using my opposite hand to help stretch the skin to ensure we get a, a smoother shave.
you want to damp the hair a little bit before you blow dry it just to help you neutralize it and we're going to start with high heat to really open up that hair follicle make it real malleable that way it lays in the direction that we want it to here we're just adding a little bit of volume towards the front and once you're done with that always hit it with the cool shot to make sure you close that cuticle and the hair stays in place now we're going to add a little bit of product when my clients request gel i usually put the gel on the comb just to make sure i'm running it from the grain all the way up i start in the back in the cowlick area and work my way forward to apply the product i always use the narrow side of the comb and to finish styling i use the wide side of the comb this helps just add a little bit more texture makes it look a little bit more natural finishing it off with some hair enhancements here is the before in case y'all forgot and finally the after a bald mid drop fade with the comb over i hope y'all learned something new guys please do give us y'all's feedback down in the comments below as always thank y'all so much for tuning in till next time peace